read it, let me hear you. Again. For the last time. This is strange. It's not only strange, it's deep. You know why it's deep? Because it's about God. This is one message that you will need and keep making reference to all the rest of your life. It will bring about a reconfiguration of certain things that you have come to believe for years. I know that some people might have taught this but said something about it. But what you are about to hear from my mouth will spark a fire in you. I am yet to meet somebody who would tell me that he doesn't want to be a friend of God. Is there anybody here? You want to be a friend of God? Wave at me. Sonship and friendship are not the same. In fact, there are many sheep in this life. The best of all the sheep is the friendship. There are things I never thought was possible growing up. If you ever tell me or we have a discussion around it, I I will tell you, I don't think this is quite possible. But in my matured mind, Now I'm beginning to understand that some things are truly possible. You know Paul said that when I was a child, I taught reason and behave like a child. He says, but now I have matured. I've grown up. Therefore, I put away childish things. The first thing is your sense of reasoning. The understanding you have concerning the things of God. As a child, there are certain things you think and you feel that these things are not possible. But the truth of the matter is, they're possible. I never thought, growing up, that a man can be a friend with God. Or a friend of God. It sounds so big. When I begin to break it down, you understand what I mean. For instance, we are talking about the one who created the whole universe. We're talking about a spirit, an immortal. How can a mortal befriend an immortal? How can a man be a friend to a spirit? The Bible calls him the father of all spirit. How do you think it is possible to father, to be the father of all spirit? And yet that person, you chose to be a friend with him. It is true that he has a form. But we're talking about an entity that you cannot see with your optical eyes. So how can you befriend such a person? I remember going going out one day. And I was having a conversation with the Holy Spirit. I bet you, you don't want to be around. It was a real conversation. And he was asking me questions like, he just threw it. He said, what do you think about this person? And it was an open conversation. And I said, well, I was talking. Well, I think he's a very nice guy. But sometimes it's not too stable. Now, I was doing that and people were passing me. And they will pass. They will be like, 
Then the Holy Spirit spoke back and said, I have plans for him. Then I said, but he doesn't know. A woman selling just called me. Yeah. I said, see, are you okay? Are you hungry? I said, no, 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 no. So I laughed. And she said, chai. You know what that chai means? Now so your own taste starts. <laughs> your own starts in a mild way. And you look well dressed. Your hair is so combed. Your shoe. But you are talking to yourself. I'm not talking about soliloquizing. No, sir. I'm talking about something very real. Having a true conversation. That's a spirit. You know why they think I'm mad? Because they can't see with their optical eyes. But yet he is real. That's exactly what I'm talking about now. How can a mortal... Now I'm talking about this because of my matured mind and my experience. Can you imagine what it looks like to be friend with a God, a spirit, father of all spirit? There's, there's a song, you know. Eze, eze ndeze nezo no buru ya. Odigo nye gina ya na chiesi. Eze ma, eze ndeze nezo no buru gi. Odigo nye gina ya na chiesi. Eze ma, Hold on. We're talking about the God of the entire universe that every other king hides under. He is the spirit that swallows other spirit. Because other spirit do not know the content of spirithood. There is the full content of spirithood. Every spirit have a demarcation. That even the spirit itself do not know their demarcations. That he is the only one. That stands in the circumference by himself and calls himself God and other spirit hides. Such a God. Such a God. Such a God. You choose and say, I want him to be my friend. I want you to grasp, just use your mind. And begin to grasp this thing. We are yet to unravel and understand the definition, the true definitions, and the areas that surrounds what we call the beginning. And yet, that is your time frame that there was a day called the beginning, in order to help you understand and calculate time. And yet, there's somebody, a being, a being, a being. That does not understand the beginning. That in order to help humanity, he said in the beginning. That is the beginning. But there is another beginning that you do not know is the beginning. That began the beginning, even before the beginning. And the beginning disappeared. And there was no beginning. And yet he existed. So now, such a person. It is this person that Job. Looked at. Give me Job chapter 9 and verse number 1. Job, Job, Job. Brother Job. Brother Job. He said something about this guy. This man. Job woke up one day. And looked at all that he has been through. Job chapter 9 verse 1. The Bible says. King James please. Then Job answered and said. Eh, Job is talking now. Verse 2. I know it is difficult of a truth. But how should man be just with God? Stop there. How can a man 
Be right with God. This is Job. How can a man truly, a mortal, be right? That means, you, you bring it down to today's discussion. He's saying, how can a man be a friend with God? Like how? I don't know how it, I don't know how you think it. I've seen preachers preach this message or try to delve into it. But I don't know if they ever comprehended what they are trying to bring to the body of Christ. How can a mortal, a human being, be a friend with the God of this world, a spirit being? That's it. A spirit being and is your friend. Before we <laughs> delve into that question, let me give you a little bit of the Oxford definition of the word friend, who a friend is. Uh, this is Oxford. This is Oxford. Because the Hebrew word from the word where you get friend means rea, R-E-A, rea. And it means a neighbor, a brother, a companion. Mm. That's what it means in the Hebrew. But let's look at what the Oxford. And now we have to now look at when this particular Oxford, when they defined the word friendship, when they tried to define the word friend. Because when we look at, if you want to look at the etymology, because this is how words were coined and gave, they gave definitions to words. They look at the root, where it comes from. So the etymology of the word friend, where did it come from? But this group of guys sat down and they defined the word friend. And I want you to take note of it. I'll give you about three. Number one, a person you know well and like, comma, and who is not usually a member of your family. This is a friend now. You know, there are some simple, simple words that if they tell you to define, you will even lack the words to put them together. Like who is a friend? You say a friend. A friend now. And who is a friend? For instance, if I say what is white, define white. You say white. White now. <laughs> okay, it's bright. Shiny. You have not defined. You are just giving us synonyms of what. So, a friend is a person you know well. Please, I want you to underline the word. You know well and you like. All right? Comma. And who is not usually a member of your world? Family. Now, let us now even assume. I'll give you the second one, then I'll take it one after the other. Number two, a person who supports an organization. So, a friend is someone who supports an organization. Number three. A person who has the same interest and opinion as yourself and will help and support you. A person who has the same interest and opinion as yourself and will help and support you. Now, let's start from number one. Who gave this definition? Oxford. Someone you know too well and like. So, I want to be a friend of God. First question. Do you know him too well? Because you would have to know him too well. Not just well. Too well. Then you also have to what? Like him. Finish the definition again. And he's not usually a member of your family. Okay, I understand. God is not even a member of our family. I know my father. I know my mother. I know my siblings. I know my uncles. So he's not a member of my family. That is past. But do you know him too well? Plus the fact that do you even like him? You need to know him too well to like him. Where would you start knowing him from? This is the person you want to be your friend. You want to be a friend to this person. You don't know him too well. 
then you like him. Give me number two definition. He supports an organization. Do you know if he's going to support your vision? Do you even know? The third one says, he has the same interest. So, uh, and what? An opinion. And what? And help and support you. Now, you want to be a friend with God. Do you know if you share the same opinion and interest? Do you know if he's going to even help you? It's a risky endeavor. It's a risky enterprise. Because you don't know him. He came and introduced himself and said, I have no father and mother. That's a risky person. When you want to get a job, they said, get someone to be your what? Guarantor. And they will write in the form. It must be someone you know. You must, before you guarantee this person, you stand as, an, you must know this person for at least five to ten years. So they will ask you questions about this person you want to stand for. And you say, I've known this person for five to ten years. He has a good character. He's someone that can support the organization. Stand and help this thing. Fine. This God that came and said, I have no father, I have no mother. I existed before the beginning. I created the whole world and the whole... Sir, where is the certificate of your creation? How do we know you are the one that founded this world? I'm trying to show you it's risky to be a friend with this person. Because he's a spirit. It's too big. It's too big a risk to take. To be a friend with God is a big, is a big, is a big job. Because you don't know him. How are we sure he won't fail? The Bible says in the book of Timothy, the God that cannot lie. How? Have you tested him to know he has not lied? Have you proved him? It's risky. Are you, are you flowing in my, my reasoning? Because don't just sit there and read the Bible. Don't expect me to bring a subject and we'll just talk about it, blah, 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 then we'll go. No, I want you to reason along. Before we even get to the benefit, you have to understand all of these things. Before you talk about the benefit. So, you look at all of these things and you sit down. Then, this is the conclusion. A man, a mortal, can never say and should not say, even though they have been saying that they want to be a friend with God. You don't choose him, he will choose you. It is in the place of the spirit to choose you because you do not have all it takes and what it takes to be a friend. God will not have to reason based on your own opinion. You are the one to come up. Isaiah chapter 1. Are you following me? He is the one to like you. He is the one to trust you. He is the one to believe in you. He is the one... Will be, he knows everything about you. You are the one that tries, you seek. He gave you a manual and said, know me through this. You can't choose God and say, I choose you to be my friend today. No, sir. It doesn't work that way. He is the one that will wake up and say, I choose Ben to be my friend. I choose Timmy to be my friend. You are not the one to say, God, you're my friend. Passion does not invite him. Isaiah 1.18 
Look at the definitions. Just look at them. Look at them. Someone you know too well and what? And like. Huh? A man has been in the ministry for 80 years. Let's assume he's been in ministry for 80 years. And he's 92 years old. So he started being in ministry from the age of 12. At 90, he has been in ministry for 80 years. Even at 80, he still tells you there are some things I don't know. And you started five years ago. <laughs> a man has been for 80 years and is telling you he's unfathomable. Yet you are told that one of the definitions of a friend is someone you know too well. Look at me. This, these definitions are the definitions of a mortal. God has a definition in himself, by himself, for the word friend. And only him can reveal it to you. Because you are not the one to choose him as a friend. He will choose you. And when it comes to opinion, he says, one of the definitions says you must have the same opinion. How can you have the same opinion and interest with God, with the spirit? Do you even know his opinion? Look at what he said. Come now. He says, come. It should be you. Come. Let us reason together. Opinion. Though your sins, he now brings it that, okay, if, he's, if sin is the problem, don't worry about your sin. I'm telling you, the, the only person that can make the invitation is God, not you. He says, if it's, going to, if it's going to be a sin, don't worry, I can handle your sin. Give me the amplified. I can handle your sin. He says, come, but let us reason together. Let's see if we can have a... Let's see. <laughs> come now and let us reason together, say the Lord. Give me the message. Come now. He's telling you. Just come now. Try. Come, sit down. Let's argue this out. You and God. Why? Do you know one person that argued with God? Joe. Come now, come and show me what I've done. Show me where I've missed it. He says, you call, yeah, come. The day came, he said, oh yeah, come, let's argue it out. When he says, okay, Job, this is how we're going to start. You stay here first. Let me ask you some questions. If you're able to answer me then, Job said, no problem. Bring it. Bring it. He said, now, tell me how deep this ground is. Job said, come, if not play. <laughs> he said, tell me the boundaries of the ocean from the sea. The sound in the seashore how many are they? Have you numbered the stones? Do you know the voice in the rock? The guy has never heard that even voices are in the rock. He said, tell me the parking slot. That means the parking lodge of snow. Do you know where the rains converse? Before they say, you hold on, let me fall in the afternoon. Then you come in the morning. Ah. God will go say, uh, hold on. Now play at the play. <laughs> All these things are not to me now. Ha! Who go ask all this kind of question? He said, I was just joking. Then Job said, I've been hearing of you with the hearing of my ear. But today, 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 I don't jam you. And in no good may person jam you. See, question. Go ask your neck. So he's not telling you, come sit down, let's argue together. When it comes to reasoning and thought, okay, Isaiah 55 verse 10. Go to Isaiah 55 verse 10. You will see something again. Isaiah 55, King James, please, verse 10. You want to reason, Abby? For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and redoneth not neither, but water the earth and maketh it bring forth blood. And board that it may give seed to the soul and bread to the eater. Uh huh. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me, but it shall accomplish that which I please it, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Uh huh. 
He's now telling you, for you shall go up. This is the blessing. Now, before he got to that place, by telling him the distance, what happens to the rain that falls and how it doesn't go back. Go to verse 8. Watch you. You know, he told us in chapter 1, verse 18, that we should come so that we can argue. We reason together. And you reason based on your level of thought. Come on now. Are you with me? Based on your level of what? Thought. Hear what he now says. The person you want to argue with and reason with. He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. How then do I reason with the person? And he says, one of the definitions of friendship says you must have the same opinion. And the same interest. If he reasons like this, you reason like this. Both of you. And this is the person we want to sit down with and call a friend. Tell your neighbor it's not possible. Drop to verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Message, please. Message translation. Thoughts. This is the person you want to sit down with and say, he's my friend. For as the sky is so as high above earth, so the way I walk surpasses the way you walk. And the way I think is beyond the way you think. Yet you are telling me that we should come and reason together. Where do I start from? What am I going to say to this God? And yet you want to call him your friend. Are you not seeing that when you have a relationship with this God and you, he calls you your friend or you, if he's talking, you should just be listening. You should not even talk. You should just be writing. Because for everything he says, it's wisdom. Are you getting some? So yet, some of us have prayed in the past. Lord, I want to be your friend. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Or there. In my heart. <laughs> I don't know where we come from. I'm going to cry. In my heart. Lord, I want to be like <laughs> Take the word and give me yourself. Take the world that he created for you. That's why the Muslims have taken everything. And we are now working in their company. Why are you giving it to them? You share testimony. Dangote just called me. Does he know your God? But you gave it to him. Take the world and give me Jesus. When he's Jesus then. Don't you have him? So I searched the scriptures. I began to search. The only thing that can help me to answer all my questions and the puzzles I have in my mind is if I can ever find anybody that the Bible says was a friend of God. That will be my P point. It's going to be my platform upon which I will stand to now narrow down what the man's life was. What did he do to achieve that great exploit? And see if I can do the same and achieve the same thing. Are you with me? Because I told you, you cannot, you cannot, you can't choose him. He will choose you. John 15. 15. King James, John 15, 15. Sixteen. Can we read the first line? One, two, go. You have not chosen me. Stop first. No rush. No rush. 
You don't choose him. Let's do it again. One, two, go. So, stop. You don't choose him. He will choose you. I'm giving you scripture so you know that I'm not trying to blab. Do we find a man in the Bible who ever became a friend of God? Yes, sir. There was one man. And let's go to that man's story and see what happened. The Bible tells us of the man, James chapter 2. James chapter 2 and verse number 20. James chapter 2 verse 20. But without no, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. A vain man, 21. Let's go. We're going to 23. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? When he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? 22. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? It's talking here. 23. And the scripture was what? Fulfilled. Somebody say fulfilled. I can't hear you say fulfilled. The scripture was what? Remember, this man now, Apostle James, is quoting a scripture that was what? Fulfilled. We will see the scripture. Let every man be a lie, including Pastor Bina, except God. The scripture was what? Fulfilled. Which said, Abraham only believed God and it was imputed unto him for what? Righteousness. Finish the rest. One, two, go. Put your hands together for this man. This is the only man the Bible says was called a friend of God. Is there anybody by the name Abraham here? Wave at me. Mercy. Stand up. Sit down. No be you. <laughs> you, friend of God. Talk real Abraham. No other Abraham. You see? Stand up. More see your suit. This guy no resemble friend. <laughs> Sit down. The Bible says he was called a friend of God. Wow. Let's clap for him again. This guy qualified to be called a friend of God. <laughs> he was called. He didn't call himself. He was called. And I want us to look at what the Bible says. He said the scripture was what? Fulfilled. Mm -hmm. It was what? Fulfilled the scripture. Romans 4. Paul also quoted that scripture. Romans 4. Some of you are just. Romans 4 verse 3. Paul also quoted the same scripture that James quoted. Romans 4 verse 3. For what said the scripture? Scripture. I want you to know his scripture. James said the scripture was fulfilled. So now Paul is saying, what said the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for what? Righteousness. He believed God. Now, Paul never included and he was called a friend of God. The only person that included it was who? James. And you must understand the reason why Paul never included it because his subject of discussion never has anything to do with what? The friendship. But James was speaking based on that. So now we see. But let us see where that scripture was quoted. The scripture they quoted, where was it written? Now, when we get to the scripture, I want you to look out for everything that Apostle James said and everything that Apostle what? Paul said. Genesis chapter 15 and verse number 6. Genesis 15. Can you see the way I'm systematically taking my teachings? That's how I teach. 
We don't rush it. So that it's like a classroom. It's a school. You know it. I write exam, set exam for you. You fail. You go home or go to Sele. So you take it little by little. Genesis 15 verse 6. And he believed in the Lord. And he counted it to him for what? Righteousness. This is what Paul quoted in Romans 4.3. But not exactly what James quoted in James 2.23. Because the other B part. And he was called the friend of God. Was not included here. Even though he quoted it. So, Apostle James. With all due respect, sir. Where did you get it from? Could it be that Abraham never wanted to include this? Or he never wanted people to know about it, even though it was written? It was not in the mind of Abraham. Abraham was not conscious of it. He never wrote, my name is brother Abraham, a friend of God. Because you can't find it here, even though this was the scripture they were quoting. But you find it also in the scriptures. Because he told us the scripture said, go to Isaiah chapter 41, verse number 8. Isaiah 41, verse number 8. Please, are you, are you still with me? Mm, I don't like the way you are responding. You are responding, the way you are responding is not cordial. Respond like people who are alive. Are you still with me? <laughs> right, Isaiah 41 verse 8 let's read together one, two, go but thou Israel at my servant Jacob whom I have chosen the seed of Abraham so God is speaking so truly he called him his friend because Isaiah is giving the prophecy that God called him friend Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse number 7 Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 7. So we see that he was called a friend of God. Can we read together? One, two, go. Art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitant of this land before thy people Israel? And gave us it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend. So his friendship is from eternity to eternity in heaven. When Abraham passes, God will say, That's my friend, pass. Celebrate this guy. Hey. This guy is expensive. A friend of God. As righteous as Job was, there was nothing that was included in his CV as a friend of God. The Bible told us Job was a man that feared God, escaped from evil. He was rich. He feared God, but he was not a friend of God. David was a man after God's own heart, but there was no such title in his CV that he was a friend of God. So you can carry the heartbeat of God, but you are not his friend. You can be a man after his heart, but you are not a friend of God. But you can, be a, you can be a friend of God without resonating what is in his heart. No, it's not possible. Are you learning? The Lord, as glorious as the prophet Elijah was. In fact, do you know that Elijah never died? He disappeared. Enoch never died. He disappeared. Those two guys were glorious in heaven. They were glorified on earth. But do you know the Bible never told us that Enoch was a friend of God. The Bible only said he walked with God and he was not seen. But yet, such title was not given to the man. He was not his friend. As good as Elijah was, he called on fire, did a lot. People feared him. He was not a friend of God. Ah! My God. 
There was another guy close to almost as close as Abraham. But he was not called a friend of God. But the illustration was used. Pastor Chi, stand up. Pastor Chris, stand. Two of you. Stand here. Face me. Sister Blessing, stand here. Sister Cynthia, stand here. Face me too. Face them. Face each other. Face each other. Face each other. What is what? Come close. It's okay. When we use people, you will like them for illustration. If they want to use you, that's when you'll be holding the wall. A wamusu. These are ladies, Abby. Celebrate them. These are men. Celebrate them. They both have hairs. Look at them. Little bit of makeup. Beautiful earrings. Wristwatch. They adorn themselves like ladies. Abby? Do they have earrings? Do they have hair? Makeup? They adorn themselves like what? Now, let's say I come in now and I say, stand. Pastor Hope, stand here. No, you stay. Pastor Hope, stay here. So I want to explain to Pastor Hope about this. And I said, ah, Pastor Hope. You know, I said, sir. I said, I saw Pastor Chris who and Pastor Chi. And they were dressed as. They were dressed as this. Sisters in church. Pastor Chi was dressed like Sister Blessing. And Pastor Chris was looking at Sister Cynthia. And you say, hey. I say, yes, oh. Say, what is wrong with them? The moment I say they were dressed like these people, it shows that they were not, or they are not these people, but they are trying to be like these people. Huh? Is English understood here? Thank you for the understanding. Sit down. Exodus 33, 11. You will get what I'm saying now. I first gave you the illustration so you understand. I told you there was a guy that was almost called a friend of God. So people always say that guy too was a friend of God. No, sir. Exodus 33, 11. You understand my illustration now. Because all the commentaries and all the, you go to the Hebrew, the way it was um, contextualized, all of them came out as the illustration I give to you. All right, let's read. One, two, go. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his face. Let's do it again. One, two, go. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. Um, if you did a little bit of English in Oxford University, can you raise your hand and just help us? Maybe, did you understand? Anybody can help us throw a little light on this? Let's see if, if, if you understand what he's saying. Broke by me. <laughs> it, it, does it correlate with the illustration I gave you? No, I don't like the way you plan nodding. Let's read it again. One, two, go. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. As a man speaketh unto his friend. As a man would speak unto his friend. Which means I spoke to him the way I speak to a friend. But he is not The way a man speaks to his friend is the way I spoke to him. But he is not my friend. There's another class he belongs to. Sit down. How many of you get? Show you anybody. On a getter. 
So the way I spoke to Moses was face to face. The way, which means one of the ways a friend speak to his fellow friend is face to face. And that's the way I spoke to Moses. As a man, as a man would speak to a friend. Face to face, but he never said. Give me the message. Did you do a little bit of English? You know what they call idiomatic expression. Okay, let's see the message. And God spoke with Moses face to face as neighbors speak to one another. <laughs> because the Hebrew word for what friend, I told you is rear, and one of it is what fr- neighbor. That's it. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. neighbor. That's it. That's it. That's it, that's it. So he spoke to him face to face as a man would speak to his friend. That means when it comes to the conversation between me and Abraham, it is in this manner that I speak to him. And that is in the manner in which I spoke to this guy. But he's not my friend. Because if he was his friend, the Bible would have categorically written down And says, and Moses was a friend of God. The only man that the Bible ever wrote that was a friend of God in the Old Testament is the man Abraham. What did God see in him? Mm -hmm. How did he become his friend? Like how? How did he become his friend? Because I want to know what the man did. Let's say, remember I told you, the such light in becoming a friend of God is that he will be the one to choose you. You are not the one to choose him. In choosing, in choosing, because all of these definitions you see written down here now, they are mortal definitions. They came from Oxford. That means it's not from divine. It's not God who wrote it and said, this is the definition of a friend. No, sir. This is mortal defining. But God has his own definition and there are characteristics and criteria in which God will look out for before he says, this person is my friend. Maybe David never qualified in that. Maybe Moses never qualified and any other person you find in the Bible never qualified except this guy. And there was something God saw in this guy. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs that by him, in, in, in the book of 1 Samuel first, it says by him actions are weighed. Then it tells us in the book of Proverbs 16, it says God weighs the spirit. So, God before he chose Abraham to be his friend, must have weighed Abraham in the balance. Like he told Nebuchadnezzar, you have been weighed in the what? Balance. And this is the outcome. So God must have weighed Abraham in the balance and all the men in his day and time And the only person that passed that exam to be called a friend of God was Abraham. And from the beginning, he was not called a friend of God. It was later. So what did God see? Number one, some of the things that you find in a friend, and probably maybe these were the things that God saw in the man. A good friend loves you throughout. A good friend loves you throughout time. It will love you throughout time. Can we do Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17? A good friend will love you all through the time. In bad times and in good times. I'm just showing you some characteristics of a good friend. Probably these were the things that God looked at and saw in Abraham and made him. Can we read together? One, two, go. A friend loveth at all times. And a brother is born for adversity. So a friend must love at all times. Number two, a friend will share your burdens. Will share your burden. You have a friend who does not share your burden. He's only wait when you kill goat and he's, you want to prepare pepper soup. There are friends like that. Oh boy, they don't pay you salary. More, 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 more hangout. When things become rough, shh. 
Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 2. You will share in all your burdens. Galatians 6 2. You have to be very fast now. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so you fulfill the law of what? Christ. Number three, selfless and humble. Selfless and humble. Selfless and humble. Number four, is reliable. Proverbs 18.24 is reliable. Proverbs 18.24 is reliable. Proverbs 18.24 A man that had friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that stick it closer than a brother. That means it will get to a point where even your brother will back up. But you find a friend who is there. I remember one of our sisters here when she was hospitalized, she was at the hospital. So I went one day to see her and pray for her. And she told me, she said, Pastor, do you know that this sister has been with me all through? Before I fell ill, we were not that close. But she showed me love. All through my stay, she will sleep at the hospital, pass the night with me in the hospital. The first thing in the morning, she has woke me up, prepared, prayed, and I said, wow. She said, that is what she does. And the day she left the hospital was the day the friend left the hospital. A friend stick it more closer. And if you have a friend, you must show yourself to be friendly. That's what the Bible says. It's not when the mother die, you die. When the wife give birth, you will exhort because you know there will be something to what? Eat. Number five, forgives you. A friend will forgive you. Number six, sacrifices for you. A friend is peaceful and patient. Proverbs 22, 24 to 25. Peaceful and patient. Proverbs 22, 24 to 25. Hurry up. Make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man, thou shalt not go. Why? 25. Least thou learn his ways and get his near to thy soul. You are a friend to a man who is always angry and beating his wife. The anointing is contagious. Because if you don't change him, he will enroll you into the school. Some of you here, little thing. And they are telling you, Yoruba will say, Oh, Kora. Listen to me. You better calm down. Lord, mommy, do too. <laughs> Are you with me? They can't apply. You are selling. Nobody is coming to buy. You say it's a witch. Brother, madam, it's not a witch. Aranka. Arangura. <laughs> How many of you are with me? You didn't get what I'm saying. Oh, you didn't get what I said. <laughs> Tell the person by your side to interpret. <laughs> Oh, I forgot. Those of you watching in China, oh, sorry, you have warned me. What I just said in Chinese means chunu hung hung. That means ahumbakasi. <laughs> oh, 
Celebrate Jesus. Your pastor knows all things. Number, keep the number. Not envious and proud. A friend is not envious and proud. You bought a car, you tell him, guy, when will you stop trekking? They begin to tell you, I don't associate with people who live in one room. But that's where you started life from. Hmm. All right? Number, does not gossip. Proverbs 16, 28, does not gossip. A friend that gossip is not a friend. Is a gossip friend? A forward man soweth strife and a whisperer separate chief friends. They will separate two good people. They will come to whisper something in the ear of this one. Whisper another thing in the ear of this one. Tomorrow I see you. We separate. Number does not judge and is not a hypocrite. Does not judge and is not a hypocrite. And the last one is a positive influence on you. These are some of the characteristics of a good friend. Now let us look at you examine. Because someone said that what made Abraham different and he became a friend of God if we look at what Romans chapter 4, go to Romans chapter 4 verse 3 says, it says, and Abraham believed God. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now, I put it to you, it was not only believing God that qualified the man to become a friend of God. Because if it was believing God, Abraham was not the only one that believed God. Hannah believed God. Isaac believed God. The, the patriarchs we read in the Bible, they all believed God. So it was not only believing God that qualified this guy. You look at some of the things that you just saw here now that I listed. And you look at the attribute that when God weighed Abraham, he saw some things. He saw that this guy, do you know what God said about Abraham? For I know him. That he will command his whole household to follow me forever. There are certain attributes that God sees that in the lineage of this guy, this guy will never be the type that will tell his children, you can choose where, wherever you want to go to. He says, no, this guy will follow to the end. That's number one. If there were secret I gave to this guy, he will keep it to the end. Do you know that the Bible says, and God tested Abraham and said, offer your son. One of the attributes or characteristics of a good friend is that you must sacrifice. And Abraham sacrificed. All. He says, give me your only and all. And the Bible says, and Abraham took it. When he gave it to God, God says, now I know. Now I know. Abraham was humble. He bared the same body that God carried. When God was going to Sodom and Gomorrah, you know what he said? He said, what are you going to? God said, I can't hide this thing from Abraham. See, it is going to become a great man. So he shared with Abraham. Abraham said, wow. So these people are, they are, oh, they have destroyed themselves. He now said, but my cousin is there. He said, okay, but God. He didn't now intercede because of his cousin alone. He said, you are a righteous judge. You can't kill the righteous and the wicked together. If you paradventure get there and see 50 people, will you destroy them? God said, no. Abraham said, okay. What about 40? He said, no. What about 30? He said, no. What about 20? He said, no. What about 10? He said, no. I won't. Because you've, you've begged, I won't. So Abraham now counted Lot, his wife, his children. At least on, in that whole nation. They should have another four people that should add now to be 10. I know they talk again. Because if he had moved to five, God would have said, okay. But he stopped at 10. And you know when they got to Sodom and Gomorrah, they could not find 10 righteous people. That's a friend. These were the things that God looked at. Abraham was reliable. Abraham was reliable. You could rely on Abraham. God shared the gospel vision with Abraham. The plan he had for the whole world. How that his son was going to come and die. And Abraham agreed to God's plan. God told Abraham, your seed will go into the land of bondage. They will be impoverished for 400 years, but I will come and release them. Abraham willingly accepted. He was reliable. 
There were many things that God saw in that man. It was not just only believing. There were many things he saw in him. When he weighed him, Abraham passed the test and God said, you are going to be my friend. It was not just believing. Sir, do you know what it means for a spirit to tell you to leave your father and mother? A spirit be that you are the only one that hears and communicates with this spirit. And the spirit came and said, Chris. And you said, eh, leave your father and mother. To where? To a land that I will show you. It's not like the land they built it. There's no house. Find that guy. Everywhere he gets and find himself. All he does with his head is to put a stone and make a pillow. He left the comfort of his house. And followed a voice. He followed an entity. A spirit. How we, are, are you okay? Do you truly trust him? How come you are able to trust that voice? And what was it that Abraham told the wife Sarah? Because I know women. Convincing them is something else. The wife if he was not married, if he was single, you would have said, okay, no problem. But, he spoke to the wife and the wife said, let's go. And they were going. Sir, where are we going to? Night will come, nowhere to lay their head. They will have to stay somewhere. Snakes will be passing. And the wife, no food. Nowhere to bait. Have you ever considered if it was a one year journey? How was she menstruating? The Bible now told us the woman became old. And God told him, I will provide for you. And it's now 25 years. Least, that, that was little wonder when God finally came to the house and ate. And he told her, where is Sarah? Go and call her. By this time next year, you will have a child. She laughed. And you know one thing? God never said, and Sarah was my friend. This is not first lady's office. That if your husband becomes the president, then you now become the first lady. No, sir. It was Abraham that was the friend of God. There was no co-sharing in this thing. The conversation between Abraham and God was deep. Every conversation. That was why God gave him the C of O of the entire world. He says, stake. Because this guy trusted him. There was no envy in the heart of Abraham. There was no pride. He never moved around and said, that's why the Bible never said, and Abraham called himself he's a friend of God. It was God who said, he's my friend. But we never saw him put the title upon himself. That all the blessings of God bestowed upon the man. Still, the guy was humble. What about Moses? Moses got angry. God said to Moses, you didn't honor me before this people. What about Elijah? Calling down fire was never the will of God. And he came to a point where he now began to brag. He said, I'm the only one. God said, no, sir. I have 7,000. He said, eh, eh. I don't know. He said, eh, Elijah, come, come, come. You don't do. Come and retire. But the Bible says Abraham died in a full old age. He wasn't sick. He climbed the bed, waved goodbye slept off and joined his ancestors the chariot of heaven came and they, God allowed his friend to be buried the burial procession he watched as they buried his friends the, the, the mortal was laid and God was watching yet his friend was with him in heaven can I tell you something every encounter of the divinity you ever have when you walk into heaven and the Lord allows you to walk, the very first place you meet is the Abraham's bosom. There's a place, a quarter, dedicated for that man. Even in heaven, he has a place. Decisions are not made without that guy. He was a friend of God. You parade the heavens and you walk and you see the citadels of Abraham. So peaceful. Why? Because he gave him not only the earth, he transcended to the heaven. Every encounter that his student had, God will come and say, Jacob, I'm blessing you not because of you, but because of my friend. Because of my friend. Abraham rejected the whole world. James chapter 4 verse 4. He rejected the whole world. Today we have people who are crying. Lord, I want to be your friend. Make me your friend. Make me your friend. Make me your friend. They ne Abraham never prayed for it. You never prayed. 
Look at James 4.4. 4. James 4.4. 4. Abraham never prayed for it. He never asked God for it. Thank you, Jesus. He never for one day said, oh God, okay now, God, you're going to do this and give me this. Oh, well. That was not a prayer point. You adulteress and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So Abraham turned his back. Materialism was the God of Lot's wife. Look at Lot. He chose the best part. Abraham went to the, but God was with him. So you look at that and you begin to see. There was something in the life of Abraham. Before you see a man that God says, this is my friend. I tell you, he must have emptied himself totally of the world. Now. Another good example you find in the Bible. Men who were the friends of God was the disciples of Jesus. John 15. Let's read from verse 13. John 15. Let's take it from verse 12. Thank you, Jesus. John 15, 12. This is my commandment. That you should love one another as I have what? Loved you. Verse 13. It says, greater love. There is no love higher than this. That a man should lay down his life for his friends. Remember they were servants before. 14. Ye are my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you. Fifteen. Henceforth, I call you not servant, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. Can you see? That you must know what your Lord is doing. So Abraham, I can't hide anything from him, seeing that he's going to be a great man. So God told him sins. What his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto what? You. Sixteen. He says, you have not chosen me. I have chosen you. And I've ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you shall ask the father in my name. He may give it to you. Drive back to verse 14. You are my friends. Now. Some people have taught that here. Lies the criteria. Or what you do to become a friend of God. No sir. This is what we do after we have become. The friend of God. To show to the world. This is our proof to the world that we are God's friends. That we keep his commandments. That we do what he says. That we do what he says. That we do. You are my friends. Only if you do whatsoever I command you. You must do the things he commands you. And he told us the commandment is to love one another. I love the man, Abraham. Do you know that song? I love the man. Can we sing it? Let's sing it together. One, two, go. I love the man of Galilee. For he has done so very much for me. He has forgiven me all my sins and sent the Holy Ghost. I love the man of Galilee. I love the man of Galilee. For he has done so very much for me. He has forgiven me all my sins and sent the One more time. Of Galilee. of Galilee, I love the man of Galilee. For he has done so very much. 
very much for me. He has forgiven me of my sin. Send the Holy Ghost. I love the man. Do you know that one? Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham. Sing it now. Come on, say, I am. Sing it, Abraham. You, you will know it, Abraham. Blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Abraham, blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed in the evening. One day, I met a young guy at the bus stop, and some group of guys, for something he said, gathered and they were beating him, and the guy was crying. They told him to kneel down, stay there. These were the guys. People gathered and they were watching. This guy was crying. Then he told his friend, give me my phone. The friend said, no, 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 don't cause trouble. He said, give me my phone. They were shouting, give in. What's he going to do? Give in. Give in. He said, give me. So they gave him. He was telling those people, ah. They said, give in. Ah, Bawo. Give in. So they gave him. He died. Hello? Is that her? Sonny? Brother? They don't kill me. Who? I do show the lies. They don't beat me. They beat you. Who? Some boys. Brother. He said, where? On that bridge. I they come. Bam. I wanted to watch this movie. <laughs> so I shifted and bought La Casera. <laughs> hmm. My God, we reign. Yesterday, you reign. Today you will reign. Hmm. Reign in Oshodi. Ha! I knew that something was going to happen. This guy was crying. His friends were saying, Ah, brothers and sisters. Sienna packed. Then we saw uniformed men, military guys. The moment they jump, bam! Six of them, two here, two here, four here. Those other guys, yay! As they were running, they just surround them. They grab two, pa pa. Before we know what that was, fiam up. The guy said, "Girl, the guy said, I tell on her. Who should they scatter?" The brother now said, "Which of them?" Say like this one. He said, "Stand up." He gave him his belt. They beat him. We hear woga. The guy stood up. Ah, he went with Islam for hide the baby. <laughs> so I sat down. He so beats this guy's pity. People now came begging. Ah, my brother. I now remember. There are benefits you enjoy if God is your friend. Number one, divine protection. You can't have, if a guy that has military brother, just military, can be this. Are you, how many of you are getting what I'm saying? When you become a friend with this God, you are divinely protected. No, did you hear when he says no weapon? Go to Isaiah 54, 17. He says no weapon. Mbaha 
mbaya inyuku geme mbaya mamaga mbaya inyuku ge mbaya that guy died he died his brother he was coming with confidence when they come against you you dial his number because no weapon mbaya inyuku geme mbaya are you with me divine protection Isaiah 54 17 he says no weapon he says fear not child of God it is your father's good will you cannot be afraid see he says no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper now do, do you know we go straight to this verse without first checking the one that preceded this verse because there's a reason why he said this he didn't just jump up and say no weapon Go to verse 16. You will see why. Pastor Man, come and stand here. I will use you as an example to illustrate what he's saying in this. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created a waster to destroy. Verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Go back to verse 16. You will not understand it. I will read it until you understand it. <laughs> he says, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire. I am the one. That guy you see that is blowing the coals in the fire. I created him. He says, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created a waster that destroys that when you see the devil bragging and saying, I will kill you, I will kill you. He says, I want you to know that I'm the one that created that idiot. I created that bastard. I know his makeup. I know what is in him. I know what he has the ability to do. I know where he can step into. I know what he can jump into. I know what he can say. I know what he cannot say. I've ordained him for certain things. Now let me tell you my own child. When you see the devil and everything in him, I put in there and I'm telling you that no weapon fashioned against you from this guy shall prosper. It doesn't matter how much they prepared it. If it's coming from this guy, I want you to know that it shall not prosper. Why? I created him. The fire in him I created. The waste in him I created. The ability, I know him. I'm not the one that made him so. He made himself so. But I know everything that is working in him. And now I'm telling you, sit down, no weapon from this guy. That fashions against you. I love the way the Amplified puts it. Give me the Amplified of verse 17. <sighs> oh, my she lad. They call your name in the mirror. They give you food poison. They send a demon to you. They send, oh, they send, uh, they say it's Okija. They went to Okija to call your name. Who is Okija? Kilonja. Are you with me? They send Shongo. What is Shongo? Where is he going to? Have you not heard that no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper? And every tongue in a state house, in a palace, in a shrine, every tongue that shall rise up against you, you shall condemn. Where do you condemn it? When you say in the house of God, Father, it shall not stand. Angels will go, pa, 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 pa. You are scared of your stepmother. Because she walks in the night. You are scared of your uncle. Because he travels to Anija. You are scared of the people around you. Because they told you they will kill you. Why are you scared? But no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment. You shall show to be in the wrong. You shall let them know that they are wrong. That means they met the wrong person. You are not dealing with the right person. You are dealing with the wrong person. The landlord that said you will not rest has entered pepper soup. An occultic man is bragging. Let me tell you something. You have a God. He's your friend. If you have this God and you don't enjoy divine protection, you don't have him. You know what he said? Go, for I shall be in you forever. 
That means when you go, you are going, you look back, you say, me, there's a snake. Paul, hey, uh, oh, 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 put your two hands together for this God. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. The cancer that will kill you has not been produced. Don't be afraid. The HIV that will drain your system has not been produced. Don't be afraid. The powers that will stop you have not been born. You have a God. His name is J-E-S-U. Divine protection. Divine. Divine. He told David, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. He says, you shall abide. You shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He says, I will give my, you know, I will give my angels charge over you. Least you dash your feet against the stone. They shall bear you on eagle's wings. Eagle's wings. When you are traveling, eagle's wings. When you are traveling, eagle's wings. When you are going out, eagle's wings. No stone will hit your leg. He said, Pastor, they sound something in my lungs. That's why I'm coughing. Ooh! Ooh! You are the one that wants to cough. Ooh! Ooh! Because if you don't want to cough, ooh! Ooh! You will lay hands on that cough and tell the body, not this place, wrong address, try the other compound. Not here. Try the other side. You say, why? Our type don't fall sick. Our type don't get cough. Our type don't suffer cancer. We have another bone. I'm a member of his body, of his bone, and of his flesh. He can't be sick. I can't be sick. He cannot die young. I cannot die. Are you with me? Divine. Number two. There was an interview one day in Exxon Mobile. And a guy, one of us here, many years ago, he will be listening now, told me, sir, I'm going for the interview and I'm preparing. I'm reading, I'm preparing, putting all my documents. I said, it is well. He said, but sir, I want to say something. I think I'll give you this second one and I close. He said, sir, a friend of mine, the other friend of mine that we're going together, the guy is sleeping. He's not troubled. He's so relaxed. He said, then I asked him, he said, his uncle is one of the senators. He told him, just go and appear. Just they don't need your appearance. Your letter will come. He said, but sir, I don't have a senator. Hmm. When he said that, I just said, hey, yeah. I said, so give it to me. He said, I don't have anybody to call. Who do I call? So I said, sit down. You will call me. You came to see the oracle. We don't go old. He's the ancient of days. I said, let me tell you something. He said, okay, sir. This is one of the benefits you get when you have an uncle that is a senator. Brother, the second benefit when you're, you are a friend of God is peace with prosperity. You must prosper. Listen, you must prosper. The Bible says, and Abraham, Abraham left empty. He left his parents' house. He left everything. He had nothing. When Jesus sent his Bible, he says, when I send you, Without anything. He said, do you lack anything? They lack nothing. Prosperity with peace. Not only divine protection. If you are a friend with God, you ought to prosper. The Bible says he is pleased with the prosperity of his servant. Look at the story of Abraham. The Bible says, and Abraham was blessed by God. In all things, I stretch my hands. 
Langis Capavria Atenista Aladea. They won't take to you. They won't take from you what belongs to you. Listen to me. This service is adding something to your life. Sir, do you have a chieftaincy title? You, you, looking back. There's a title that is coming. Leave it. Don't have anything to do with it. Because something bigger wants to happen to you. When this thing happens, they will want to coronate you and give you a title. Mm. I will see you. It's big. It's big. It's very big. You will know you met me. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I see them. They want to put that thing on you. Mm. Because there's a position. God wants to do for you that thing you have longed for. Uh, but when he finished doing that thing, they now want to... Everybody stand up. Let me stop here. Let me stop here. Because I wanted to tell you the third one, which is fruitfulness. And that was why Abraham's wife had to give birth. You can God cannot be your father, your friend. And he has children running up and down in heaven. And he will not give you. Came to tell you something when someone like me is talking to you I want you to know I'm speaking from a realm powers have been given to us because we have walked upon the coals of fire you will never ever change you are the Lord, you remain the same. 